Hello, everyone. Greetings. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 Virtual uh, Research Innovation Awards. We're pleased that everyone's able to join us today as we honor innovators and scientists here at UNMC and UNO. There's, uh, there will be a PDF of the awards ceremony uh, that we're going to put in the chat. Um, please feel free to open it up as it does have additional information about the awards as well as our current and um, past honored innovators. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Michael Dixon, President and CEO of Unimed. And Unimed is a technology commercialization and development arm for UNMC and UNO. We help, in, uh, we help advance research innovations and commercialize new inventions. Our mission statement is to improve healthcare by fostering innovation, advancing biomedical research, engaging entrepreneurs in the industry to commercialize new novel technologies. So I've been involved with tech transfer here at UNMC for close to two decades now. And this is the first year that we haven't been able to get everyone together for a banquet to toast their hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that goes into each of these innovations. However, if, if 2020 has taught us anything, it's that we have to adapt and overcome our challenges. I think we've learned to become more efficient with remote work and research is actually producing more innovation than ever before. We're seeing more life-saving technologies and uh, greater potential uh, in all these innovations. The Unimed staff is continuing to work with each of these innovations. And as I'll highlight later in the Innovation Rewind, the volume of these discoveries and partnerships really did not slow down during the pandemic. The Unimed team actually found new and uh, creative ways to work with many of our COVID-related inventions, getting them to market rapidly. In some cases, we went from idea to design to production to sales in less than six weeks. So one advantage of hosting the awards virtually is that now it's easier to record. So if anyone would like to see the awards again or share with a family member or someone who couldn't be with us today, you'll be able to access the recording on the Unimed YouTube channel. So um, as my kids would say, please subscribe and like. I appreciate everyone taking the time today to, to be with us. I know everyone's got a busy schedule, but without our innovators and, and their constant supply of new ideas, research and inventions, there's, there are no patents or licenses or revenue. We're extremely thankful also for all the partnerships. None of this happens in a vacuum. We have many collaborators that help to make this work happen. And we'd like to thank all of them um, and, and everyone honored here today. So at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce UNMC and UNO's Chancellor and Chair of the Nebraska Medicine Board, Dr. Jeffrey Gold, to provide opening remarks for today's awards. Dr. Gold is a tireless advocate and champion for the development and commercialization of university technologies. Hello, I'm Dr. Jeff Gold, and I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to the 2020 University of Nebraska Medical Center and University of Nebraska at Omaha Annual Innovation Awards Ceremony. Every year, we have an opportunity to honor innovation on our campuses. People who are doing research, who are defining new technology, techniques, issuing patents, license agreements, starting new companies, and adding to the economic prosperity of our community, and of course, turning their bench to bedside science into a reality. This year has been a particularly important year for us in that even in the third quarter, uh, during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic days here affecting all of our campuses, we disclosed 34 new inventions, the third most in Unimed history. In the fourth quarter, there were 39, the second most in Unimed history. And there were 30, count that 30 COVID-related inventions disclosed in the fiscal year ending 2020. The opportunity for our research scientists in COVID areas, in heart disease, cancer, women's and children's health, neurosciences, and so many other areas to turn their concepts from the laboratory into new and high demand intellectual property is truly remarkable, let alone to do it at the time that our campuses, our investigators, our nation and the world are being challenged by this pandemic. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate all 
who are receiving awards and recognition today to thank you for your hard work. It also gives me a great opportunity to thank Dr. Michael Dixon and the entire team at Unimed for their work in commercializing our intellectual property and, of course, for putting this awards ceremony together. But rest assured, as we have seen in the last year, with a 26% increase in research awards at the Med Center and a 22% increase in research awards at UNO, the best is truly yet to come. Congratulations and thanks for the opportunity to be with you today. All right, thank you, Chancellor Gold, uh, for that great introduction. We really do appreciate all the support that you've given the innovators here at, at UNMC and UNO. At this point, I'd like to provide a bit of information about Unimed and really encourage anyone who thinks they may have an idea or new discovery to contact us and see how we can work together to help bring that idea and make it available to the public. If you look at our website, unimed.com, there are many ways to contact us. We've listed our email, phone numbers, directions to our office. If you want to meet in person, uh, get a hold of us uh, ahead of time just to make sure someone uh, that you want to talk to is here. But honestly, if there's any question or, or something that we can help with, please reach out and let us know. We, we want to be your partner as, as we work to commercialize new technologies. So one of the reasons we have um, the ability to celebrate today is um, due to an important piece of legislation that was actually created 40 years ago. So the Bayh-Dole Act was, was in, implemented in 1980. Um, prior to that, the federal government retained ownership of inventions, meaning it was really quite rare for university inventions to be patented, licensed, licensed and, and brought to a product. This year, we're celebrating that 40th anniversary, and there's a lot of publicity around this and its impact on, on universities as, as well as the economy. As noted in this handy infographic, um, since 1996, licensing of academic inventions to the private sector has created more than 4.3 million jobs and generated up to 1.3 trillion in economic output. Baidu is also responsible for the creation of more than 11,000 startup companies. Unimed has been an active participant and supporter of the Baidu celebration activities. So if you have an opportunity, I ask that you please help us spread the word and make sure people are aware of this really important piece of bipartisan legislation that continues to encourage innovation and the advancement of science. So if you've heard my talk before or seen our annual report, you know that we track several metrics related to innovation and commercialization. These metrics really start at research funding and goes all the way through patenting and licensing. So as noted by Chancellor Gold in the opening remarks, research is continuing to climb 26% here at UNMC, 22% at UNO. And what that means is it's, we're going to see more innovations occurring and with that, we're seeing more opportunities to partner with the private sector. At this point, we'd really like to congratulate everyone involved in that process. It, and it goes all the way from faculty, students, staff, administrators, sponsored programs, our research leaders, Jennifer Larson, Ken Bales, and really all the deans, directors, and chairs. All of this is a team effort, and it's all really, really important as, as we look to create innovation and new products. So, Looking at the, the long path from discovery to product, um, inventions often are, are a part of a, a research program, but, but not required. We do see inventions coming from other sectors of the campus too, including students and, and staff just solving problems, uh, real world problems. Last year, we, had, we received 105 new inventions. So that's 105 new opportunities to better diagnose, manage, or, or treat disease. Also, I'm really pleased to report that 85 of our 157 inventors last year were new inventors. Those are inventors that had not submitted an invention previously. So we're hopeful that our research will continue to find pockets of campus um, on both of our Omaha campuses where we were getting new inventors. And uh, all of you as experienced inventors now on, on the, uh, the Zoom today, we ask that you please continue to spread the word so that people know how to engage with us and, and continue to submit new inventions. As Chancellor Gold noted in the opening remarks, the, the pandemic did not slow down innovation. In fact, it added fuel to the fire. Um, we saw more than twice as many new inventions in the last two quarters of 2020, making it the most productive six month span in our history. So to help make sure these ideas and resources are well protected, Unimed um, facilitates transfers of materials and information through 
material transfer agreements and confidential disclosure agreements. These agreements are, are really important in that they're a marker that our researchers have strong academic and industrial collaborations. And we continue to strive to have these agreements turned around as quickly as possible, often in a matter of days, if, if not hours, if it's a good partner. We strongly encourage collaboration, but also want to make sure that our, our researchers and university are, are properly protected. One of our strengths is that we have two very experienced patent attorneys, Jeff Anderson and Jason Nicola, um, both with, with significant private firm experience overseeing this activity. These type of agreements are really key to a well-run institution, and um, I think it's a, a testament to the, our institutional commitment here is that we have talent like this managing these type of agreements. As we move down the commercialization phase, um, another key metric is patents. Um, a patent is a marker for something that's a good idea that is novel and also um, has a potential market. Now these assets, um, these are assets that companies and venture capitalists, entrepreneurs will invest their time and money into. Last year, we filed 155 patent applications, which is another company record. And in addition, we had 61 patents issued, 23 in the US and 38 foreign. Uh, two of the experts in this process, again, Jason Nicola oversees our IP section and Mindy Ware, our patent paralegal. Again, very happy to have such talent and experienced team securing these assets and, and helping make sure that the university is well positioned as we market them. I might be jumping a little ahead of myself, but one of the things I'm really proud of, of, of those 23 issued patents, 17 were licensed to companies to, to develop. So the, the, I, the production of um, of IP, but also it's really important to get those into the hands of other people who invest in them. And of those 17 licensed, um, they went to nine different companies. So we've got good diversity, both in, in the licensing of the IP, as well as, as the um, uh, different companies uh, working on them. So as we market that IP to prospective licensees, we also track the success of that marketing effort. So we, we look at opportunities. And opportunities are, are really when an industrial partner says, hey, that, that looks really interesting. I'd, I'd like to develop that into a product or at least talk to you about it. Last year, our marketing uh, efforts created 169 new opportunities. Again, a, another company record. Um, and that these industrial connections were really critical um, as we continue to make relationships and, and um, get these uh, matured into licensing opportunities. The licensing team is led by Dr. Matt Bame, uh, Dr. Catherine Marari, and Dr. Tyler Scher, top licensing specialist. Also, the newest member of our licensing team is uh, AJ Crawford, listed below. So moving on to probably what is our most important metric, and that is actual licenses. So while inventions and marketing is really important, it's critical that we find industrial partners that will commit the significant resources to developing an idea into a product. Last year was a solid year. We executed 16 licenses. And as you can see from the five-year rolling trend, um, we're significantly higher than, than we were five years ago or, or the previous 10 years ago. Much of the credit to these um, developing these opportunities into licenses goes to the licensing team again, including Matt Bain, Joe Rungi, Catherine Marari, and Tyler Scher. They've utilized a, a myriad of different resources and, and um, techniques to bring several small and large companies to our campus to get this done. One area that we feel is really ripe for growth is our startup activity. UNMC has historically had good startup activity, noted by two to three startups a year. But um, last year, you can see that we created five new startups. And we believe there's a strong opportunity to build and grow more startup companies based on UNMC technologies. And we anticipate uh, at least five over this next year. To help build in this momentum, we're really fortunate to have a strong team uh, building Unitech, the incubator accelerator slash translational research institute. We see Unitech as more than a, a downstream partner. They're really a vital resource for our university and our whole local uh, ecosystem. Unimed will help our nascent startup companies as they start and grow into the next generation of biotech and pharma companies. They've already attracted the eye of the federal government as a recipient of a highly competitive I-6 award, as well as a Kauffman Entrepreneurship Grant. I see a bright future for biotech startups as we continue to work to make Omaha and Nebraska a destination for biotech and venture investment. In addition to Unitech, I6, and Kauffman, Unimed has also partnered with other academic medical centers in the region to help create the Sharp Hub. 
Sharp Hub provides resources to faculty and entrepreneurs that are advancing university technology and applying for SBR STTR awards. We've already seen a significant increase in SBR submissions and expect that trend to continue as more take advantage of these resources. If you'd like to learn more about Sharp Hub, please feel free to reach out to me or Tyler Share. So Unimed has several different avenues for revenue generation. Royalty revenue is a difficult metric as almost all of our technologies require FDA approval before they can be sold. And that means that typically it's five to 12 years after a license is signed and requires successful navigation of that product development gauntlet. Fortunately, uh, Unimed works to create revenue for the university in other ways. Last year, we helped directly generate close to $2 million in sponsored research. And this research support was really important as it was specifically directed at developing our intellectual property. It's a critical funding that helps pull that IP through the valley of death and into the clinic or market where it can have a positive impact on healthcare. Of the tens of thousands of licenses executed by universities each year, only a few will have the ability to make blockbuster status. And when that rare event does occur, the rewards can be substantial. A small percentage of a $5 billion drug has the potential to fundamentally change our campus and put us on a different trajectory. That's one of the reasons we continue to try to develop as many innovations as possible. Ultimately, it's impossible for us to know which technology has, is going to be a blockbuster, so we're continuing to take as many shots as possible because more opportunities mean more potential for that proverbial home run. So we truly believe that more can be accomplished by working together rather than working alone. Great ideas often come at the intersection of, of ideas and disciplines and collaboration for the creation of ideas is critical. We hope that you see Unimed as another example of a collaborator that maybe many faculty and students may not initially consider because we collaborate at a later stage. However, we're here to collaborate with you and help make sure new ideas and technologies progress from the bench to the bedside to the clinic and the market where they can have a significant impact. So now is the time that everyone's been waiting for. Um, and to do the honors, I'd like to pass the host duties over to my colleague, Dr. Matt Bain. Dr. Bain is Unimed's Vice President and Director of Licensing, which means he oversees many of the day-to-day -day operations of Unimed, including the receipt, evaluation, marketing, and licensing of new inventions. Dr. Bain. Thank you, Michael. I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's award ceremony. It's my honor uh, to present the awards again this year. Uh, today, we'll recognize those individuals who submitted new invention notifications, uh, who were inventors on issued patents, and who had their technologies licensed in, fis in the fiscal year 2020. We'll also award uh, three special awards at the end of the ceremony. Unimed's goal is to see new ideas and technologies developed into products that can help improve healthcare. The first step and foundation of this process is the discovery and development of new inventions. Even though not every invention that is submitted to Unimed will ultimately be successfully developed into a product, we want to recognize and highlight the importance of all of these inventions, successful or not, because without this innovative thinking, there would be no patents or technologies to license that could one day become products that help enhance the lives of millions. Since we are virtual this year, we can't have all of our inventors stand and be recognized like we typically do. But we do want to display all of your names and we want to recognize and highlight how important your inventive contributions are. So this year, UNMC and UNO faculty submitted 105 inventions to Unimed. There were 157 different inventors included among these inventions. Of these inventors, we had 85 new inventors who had not previously submitted an invention to Unimed, along with 39 inventors who submitted more than one invention in fiscal year 2020, and they're uh, highlighted with a star behind their name. We want to encourage all of you to continue to think outside the box and continue to innovate. Each invention we get is another potential shot on goal and another potential opportunity to create something that could positively affect people's lives. So a new invention is the first step toward the development of a potential product. In order to protect these ideas and generate valuable assets that are needed to attract 
a commercial partner, Unimed often pursues patent protection in the US as well as internationally for some of the inventions that we receive. Patent process can take many years and requires a significant investment of time and effort on the part of the inventors. Therefore, today we would like to acknowledge the efforts made by our inventors that resulted in a US patent being issued on their invention. All inventors whose names are read today will receive a commemorative plaque detailing their patent. Our first issued patent is titled Creatine Oral Supplementation Using Creatine Hydrochloride Salt. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Jonathan Benestrom, a professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This patent covers a nutritional supplement comprised of creatine hydrochloride, and this technology has been licensed to Vero Systems and is available for purchase in a number of retailers nationwide. Our next issued patent is Method and Apparatus for Fibrin Sheath Disruption. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Marius Florescu. Dr. Florescu is an associate professor in the de Department of Internal Medicine within the Division of Nephrology. The patented technology covers a hemodialysis catheter that is capable of disrupting the formation of a fibrin sheath outside of the catheter. This patent has been licensed to a startup company called Chrysalis Medical for further development. Our next patent is analogs of C5A and methods of using same. Uh, we'd like to recognize Dr. Tammy Killian, a professor in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology. This patent covers the use of peptide analogs of C5A for the treatment and prevention of infectious diseases. This was co-invented along with Dr. Sam Sanderson who passed away a few years ago. This patent has been licensed to Dr. Sanderson's startup company, Promune, uh, who is continuing to develop this technology. The next patent is titled Medical Irrigation System. We'd like to recognize Mr. Thang Nguyen and Dr. Michael Wadman. Mr. Nguyen is a nurse practitioner in Nebraska Medicine and Dr. Wadman is the chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine. This patent covers a handheld gas pressurized wound irrigation system for the cleaning of wounds. Next up is the patent titled Pyromycins and Methods of Using the Same. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Rongxi Li, Dr. Ken Bales, and Dr. Yan Lu. Dr. Li is a professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Dr. Bales is the Associate Vice Chancellor for Basic Science Research and Vice Chair and Professor in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology. And Dr. Liu is a Research Manager in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This patent covers novel pyromycin-based compounds and their use for the prevention and treatment of bacterial infections. Our next patent is titled Platform Device and Method of Use to Assist in Anastomosis Formation. We would again like to recognize Dr. Marius Florescu, and this patent covers a biodegradable platform device for use in an anastomosis. Our next issued patent is Mixed Lineage Kinase Inhibitors for HIV AIDS Therapies. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Howard Gendelman, who is a chair in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience. This patented technology covers a combination of long-acting nanoformulations of anti-HIV medications uh, combined with Mixed Lineage Kinase Inhibitors for the treatment of HIV. And this patent is co-owned with another university, the University of Rochester. The next patent also gets the award for longest title is polyethylene glycol conjugated glucocorticoid prodrugs and compositions and methods thereof. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Dong Wang and Dr. Zhen Sun Jia. Dr. Wang is a professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Dr. Jia is a research assistant professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This patent covers prodrugs of glucocorticoids for the treatment of inflammatory diseases such as lupus. This patent has been licensed to Dr. Wong's startup company, Shannon Pharmaceuticals. Shannon has received initial investments to advance its lead compounds through preclinical studies. Conversely, this patent gets the award for the shortest title, and it's titled Sheath. Uh, for this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Greg Gordon. Dr. Gordon is a uh, radiologist and the founder and chief medical officer of Radix Devices. This patent covers a curvable sheath for use in endovascular procedures that provides the physicians with a more comfortable and stable workflow environment that helps reduce muscul musculoskeletal fatigue during procedures. 
Dr. Gordon's startup company, Radix Devices, has licensed this technology and has developed it into a product known as Stantol. Stantol is currently on the market and is being sold to hospitals nationwide. The next patent is creatine ester pronutrient compounds and formulations. Again, we'd like to recognize Dr. John Vennerstrom for this patent. This patent describes creatine ester compounds and formulations for treating inflammation and pain. And again, this has been licensed to Vero Systems and is available on the market as a product known as Amino Active. Our next patent is titled Multifunctional Assessment System for Assessing Muscle Strength, Mobility, and Frailty. This patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Jason Johanian. Dr. Johanian is a professor in the Department of Surgery. This patent technology covers a multifunctional device that is used to assess a patient's frailty and predict potential surgical outcomes and complications. This has been licensed to Dr. Johanian's startup company, FutureSure, for further development. The next issued patent is circulating antibodies against MA addicts as a biomarker for coronary artery disease. We'd like to recognize Dr. Dan Anderson, Dr. Jeffrey Thiel, and Mr. Michael Dury. Dr. Anderson is an associate professor in the Department of Internal Medicine. Dr. Thiel is a professor in the Department of Internal Medicine, and Mr. Dury is a research coordinator in the Department of Internal Medicine. This patent covers methods for identifying patients at risk for adverse cardiac events based on the presence of antibodies that bind to MA addicts. This patent has been licensed by a startup company for further development. Next issue patent is titled Method for Subtyping Lymphoma Types by Means of Expression Profiling. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Kai Fu and Dr. Timothy Greiner. Dr. Kai Fu is the co-director of the James Armitage Center for Hematological Malignancies Research, and Dr. Timothy Greiner is a professor in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology. This patent covers methods of selecting treatment options for patients with specific lymphoma types based on analysis of digital gene expression data. And related to our last patent, this patent is titled Methods of Identifying, Diagnosing, and Predicting Survival of Lymphomas. Again, we'd like to recognize Dr. Kai Fu and Dr. Timothy Greiner, as well as Dr. James Armitage and Dr. Julie Bose, who are both professors in the Department of Internal Medicine in the Division of Oncology and Hematology. This patented technology covers methods for the identification, diagnosis, and prognosis of lymphoma based on gene expression patterns. So that concludes our licensed patents uh, portion of the awards. Um, then I'll the intellectual property rights that we secure are valuable assets that commercial partners need in order to develop novel products and services. Unimed transfers these rights to commercial partners to the use of license agreements. As part of these license agreements, the university will share <clears throat> revenue that is generated by the commercial partner. Funds received by the university from these license agreements can be used to help fund new research that will lead to additional new and valuable discoveries within the university system. As with patents, it can take a number of years and a lot of work on behalf of the, the inventors to see a technology become licensed. So we'd like to honor those individuals that have had their technology licensed during fiscal year 2020. Inventors of these technologies will receive a commemorative award highlighting their license, license technology. Our first license technology is called thermosensitive prodrug formulation. We'd like to recognize Dr. Don Wong, Dr. Zhen Xin Jia, Dr. Rongo Ren, and Dr. Xin Wei. Dr. Don Wong is a professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Dr. Jia is a research assistant professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And Dr. Ren and Dr. Wei are, are both postdocs in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This technology is a thermosensitive hydrogel system that is liquid at room temperature and forms a gel uh, at higher temperatures, such as body temp. It can be used to locally deliver a variety of drugs for the treatment of diseases such as osteoarthritis. This technology was licensed to Dr. Wong's newest startup company, Ensign Pharmaceutical. In a very short period of time, the company has secured initial funding to start moving forward with the development of their lead formulation. The next licensed technology is called upper limb prosthetics. We'd like to recognize Dr. Jorge Zuniga, Mr. Walker Ars, and Mr. James Pierce. 
Dr. Zuniga is an assistant professor in the Department of Biomechanics at UNO. And Mr. Aris and Mr. Pierce were both students in the Department of Biomechanics and are now students here at UNC. This technology consists of two prosthetic devices, the hybrid arm, which is a combination of body-powered and motor-driven upper limb prosthetic device. And the second is the modular arm, which is a prosthetic that houses a suite of task-specific end effectors that can be swapped out as needed. This technology was licensed to a local Nebraska-based startup company for further development. Our next licensed technology is genome editing technology. We'd like to recognize Dr. Chanabasavaya Guru Murthy. Dr. Guru Murthy is a professor in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience. This technology is a simplified gene editing method for helping create transgenic animals. The technology is licensed to a research tool company that is focused on genome editing based technologies. Our next award is for the ergonomic surgical loop head strap. We'd like to recognize Dr. Donnie Saw. Dr. Saw is a professor in the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences. And Dr. Saw's technology is a surgical loop head strap that offloads the weight of the device from the nose and ears and places it on top of the surgeon's head. This is licensed to a local startup company that is manufacturing and currently selling these devices. Next licensed technology is 3D printed nasopharyngeal swabs. We'd like to recognize Dr. Jesse Cox. Dr. Cox is an assistant professor in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology. During the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a shortage in the commercially available swabs for diagnostic testing. Dr. Cox developed a swab design that could be easily manufactured using 3D printing and was able to provide these swabs to Nebraska Medicine. Dr. Cox's startup company has since licensed this technology. The next license technology is another example of some of the innovation that has occurred uh, as a result of the pandemic. This one is titled Infectious Aerosol Capture Device Housing and Adapters. And we'd like to recognize Dr. Stephen Lisko, Dr. Nicholas Markin, and Dr. James Linder. Dr. Lisko is the chair of the Department of Anesthesiology. Dr. Nicholas Markin is an associate professor in the Department of Anesthesiology. And Dr. Linder is the CEO of Nebraska Medicine and a professor in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology. This technology is a collection of components can be used in a mask that will collect and filter out viral particles that are exhaled by a patient. This technology was developed to help protect healthcare workers treating patients that were potentially infected with COVID-19. This technology was licensed by a local company called Omaha Custom Manufacturing, and they are currently manufacturing and selling the infectious aerosol capture device adapter. This licensed technology is Phosphodiesterase 4B selective inhibitors. For this technology, we'd like to recognize Dr. Corey Hopkins. Dr. Hopkins is an associate professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This technology is a set of novel phosphodiesterase 4B inhibitors that can be used for treatment of a variety of inflammatory diseases. In 2019, Dr. Hopkins was awarded the most promising new invention award for his work with these compounds. Unimed quickly found commercial interest in this work and has licensed the technology to a life sciences development group that will look to spin this out into a startup company in the near future. This group has already secured SDTR funding to further help develop these compounds. Our final licensed technology award is for the saw precision injection syringe. For this technology, we'd like to recognize Dr. Donnie Saw, Professor uh, in the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences, and Dr. Tyler Scher, who is a licensing specialist here at Unimed. This technology is a novel syringe design that enables medical professionals to safely and easily perform one-handed injections with improved control. This new syringe is especially useful in delicate procedures. This has been licensed to a new startup company that will look to finalize the 510K application with the FDA in the near future. So this brings us to the special awards portion of our program. In past years, Unimed has recognized a small number of individuals with special awards for their innovative work. This year, we will continue that tradition by awarding three special awards, the Unitech Startup of the Year Award, the Most Promising New Invention Award, and the Innovator of the Year Award. Our first special award, will be presenting Unitech Startup of the Year Award 
which honors one of Unitech's incubator companies for their outstanding efforts to develop new products. This year's Startup of the Year Award goes to Dr. Steven Salzbrenner and his startup, BreezeMed. Dr. Salzbrenner is an assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry, and Dr. Salzbrenner founded BreezeMed to help develop a new software solution to help doctors and pharmacists navigate the red tape at insurance companies and ultimately increase the speed at which patients can get their prescriptions filled. BreezeMed was recently awarded a phase one STTR grant to help further develop the software platform. Congratulations to Dr. Salzbrenner. For our next special award, I'd like to present the most promising new invention award. Each year, Unimed selects one invention as the most promising new invention. This is an invention that the Unimed team believes has strong potential to find commercial success. This year's most promising new invention award goes to Dr. Joseph McMorty and Dr. Daniel Serdell for their invention of a novel anterior cervical disc space spreader. Dr. McMorty is a chief resident in the Department of Neurosurgery and Dr. Serdell is an associate professor in the Department of Neurosurgery. Dr. McMorty and Dr. Serdell have re-engineered a commonly used tool called a C-spine retractor to improve the working space and also provide the surgeon with enhanced access during complicated neurosurgical procedures. They have developed a functional prototype and are currently testing it in cadaver studies. This work has already generated interest from a number of medical device companies. Congratulations to Dr. McMorty and Dr. Serdell for your innovative idea. Our final special award is the Innovative of the Year Award. This award is given to individuals for excellence in innovation. Generally, we have awarded the Innovative of the Year Award to a single inventor. However, this year we wanted to honor an entire group of inventors for their amazing and innovative efforts. This year's Innovator of the Year Award goes to all of our inventors who submitted new inventions in fiscal year 2020 for ideas related to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the span of a few months, Unirad received 28 inventions involving 43 different inventors related to the ongoing pandemic. These inventions included ideas such as personal protective equipment, new diagnostic approaches, potential therapeutics, software and apps for tracking and screening patients, as well as research tools and simulators. As you saw from our presentation today, some of these inventions have already been made into actual products that have been used in hospitals, such as the 3D printed nasopharyngeal swabs, the intubation shield, and the infectious disease filter adapter for air masks. This flurry of new ideas and the strong effort to innovate during the pandemic by the UNO, UNO and UNMC communities was amazing to witness and rightly deserves Unimed's highest honor of achievement. We would now like to individually recognize each inventor who is involved in submitting a COVID-19 related invention. All of these inventors will receive a special award for their efforts. The 2020 COVID-19 inventors are Jesse Cox, James Linder, David Brett Major, Yana Broadhurst, James Lawler, John Martin Lowe, Joshua Santarpia, Thang Nguyen, Michael Wadman, Wesley Zager, Gurudat Pandalia, Somaya Yalmanchili, Chanabasavaya Guru Murthy, Roland Quadros, Rao Chendri, Stephen Lisko, Nicholas Markin, Michael Ash, Thomas Schulte, Michael Mazgaj, Jingwei Zi, Mark Carlson, Shikswan Chen, Alec McCarthy, Ellen Kearns, Russell McCalla, Yuri Lubchenko, Karen Zagorski, Christy Barnes, Jamie Dowdle, Samuel Pate, Benjamin Stobe, Benson Adagwa, Howard Gendelman, St. Patrick Reed, Gerald Farkey, Hannah Krieger, Paul Fay, Luke Hanke, Ken Bales, Gloria Borgstahl, Sid Byreretti, Babu Gouda, Sarinda Shulka, and Heather Nichols. Thank you for your amazing efforts and your dedication to develop solutions to help fight the COVID-19 pandemic. So this concludes the Innovation Awards. On behalf of everyone at Unimed, I would like to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to participate in this year's Innovation Awards. Hopefully next fall, we will be able to host the awards as a live in-person event and directly interact with everyone as we have in the past. Again, thank you for your time today.